Way in the back. Shout loud. I can't hear. <laughs> well, I, I like Charles Dickens. He's, he's one I can recommend. Yeah, uh, a lot of the old ones. I mean, I, I, do, I do enjoy that era uh, of storytelling. They seem to have more time and leisure to let things unfold and, and let people sink down into it. I like that. Um, for the newer things, I, I enjoy a fellow named Martin Cruz Smith. And um, uh, gosh, just about anything. Um, I don't know. I, I, I do spend a lot of time reading history and um, now uh, physics and, and uh, philosophy and stuff. But, you know, you know, The, the, the question, if I understand it, is uh, why I'm always breaking into the story to tell another story. Uh, uh, the story within a story, the thing started with um, when I was discovering and working on Son of Albion series, and even before that, um, reading all these wonderful Celtic stories, but there wasn't an outlet for that. And I wanted to give a flavor of what the people who lived, were alive then might have heard as they sat around the campfire. What were they listening to? What was their life like? And so, it, it, so I would choose stories. Uh, say, someone would tell a story in the in, in the book um, that had to do, that had to relate it to what was actually happening in the book. So it became uh, a little to offer a bit of resonance, a, a little bit looking at the same story from a different point of view, uh, something like that. But but it would also reinforce what was going on thematically, perhaps. Uh, in the rest of the book, so it became like a mini capsule of the meaning of the book you know, in that story, if you could unravel it. Um, but it's also a way to add uh, authenticity and to let other people hear what I thought was uh, just a delightful you know, way with the, the, the Celtic stories moved and, and, and how you know, what, what fun they were. Um, and, and, it, and it seemed to fit in the, within the context of that. And so it was something I just enjoyed, so I kept doing it for each, each uh, book. Uh, in the introduction to uh, your life story here, it was mentioned <laughs> that uh, that you wrote a lot of articles and a lot of nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Did you always write stories uh, up to that, or did a lot of your nonfiction writing sort of morph into? into no, it was just a, it was just a very uh, mechanical reason was that the magazine didn't do fiction, and that was my love and orientation. And uh, but it was a great it was a great place to learn. You know, about writing and, and having to do perform different uh, sorts of writing and, and uh, I enjoyed the mechanics of it but I always had an itch to do my own something and, and so um, and there came a point where I felt I had done about everything that the magazine had to offer and so I launched out on, on my fiction. Okay, uh, let's talk about story endings and how do I arrive at them. Um, no, I don't map out things uh, in that way. It usually I have a, a sort of a destination in mind, you know, and just sort of aim for it and, and, and keep going. And um, uh, but I allow myself to be surprised as well if, if things develop that I hadn't thought of you know, when this story, when the journey began. Um, I'll, I'll allow that to happen. But uh, I have. Seems to me, at least, at least my own books. If I try to impose too much of my own presupposed ideas on the story, it generally will run aground at some point. So, I, my job, as I see it, is to sort of just pay attention to what the story wants to do and try to help it, you know, and, and stay out of the way. Yeah. Uh, 
A little bit longer than that, yeah. So how far are you in the next one? I've got you finishing this. How much do you know, basically, of your next book and this has Okay, where, where, where are we in the process? The, the, um, yeah, the, yeah this, this book is just finished. I've, I have finished the principal writing on the second book, and I've begun the third. Uh, now that there will be editing to be done and the final, um, you know, the final draft to be agreed and all that, and that that'll that'll go on for a few months, I expect. But there'll be also be writing on book three as well. So, <laughs> it just all depends. But no later than this time next year. What that is? So, no, um, uh, the, all the titles. Okay, the, the second the second book is called the Bone House. The third book is the Spirit Well. Uh, the fourth is the Shadow Lamp, and the fifth is the Fatal Tree. But that's as much as I'll say about any of them. So. <laughs> But it, it's, 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 it's explained in the book to you. At one time, your website said you were working on a series on Egypt. Is that well, yeah, what it may be said, it maybe said that. Maybe it said that uh, I was doing reading for a series on Egypt, and that comes into this book. And then it continues as, as, as part of the destinations uh, that we keep coming back to. But there are a number of others. There is uh, Prague in the 1600s. There is London in the 1800s. Uh, Macau, as I said, in the 1700s, and, and other places too that, that link up for various reasons. No, you can't go to the future. It's explained in the book why that. <laughs> yeah, one or one or two more, and then we're. Do some signing. No? Oh, one more. <laughs> no, it's shocking. Yeah. I don't. No, I don't. I don't. I don't cry over them uh, in that way. But you know, I I feel bad when when somebody has been a friend. You know, in the story. But um, it's a hard world. And, 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 Bad things can happen. Do you let your wife read it and make sure that people will cry when well, they read it? <laughs> <laughs> well, le letting her read it doesn't come into it. Uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, no, 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 she, she, she oh, insists. Yeah, yeah, she insists. Well, she's, a, she's a very, very good first reader, first someone to uh, sounding board to try things and, and see if it's working. So, yeah, good advice. Well, thank you. Thank you.